Hello and welcome to the Worn and Wound podcast. My name is Blake Bettner. I'm here in studio today in Brooklyn. Uh, it's just me and Josh. Hey, Josh, how you doing? Doing real good, man. How are uh, you? Cool, cool. Excellent. Um, it was a little breezy out there coming in. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, but, uh, just a little. <laughs> but it's not just us here. We have somebody uh, out on the, uh, well, on the West Coast, uh, the Northwest Coast. Uh, Max, our guest, uh, the founder, is it co-founder? Proprietor of uh, Watch <laughs> Crunch, Max. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, so you are in uh, you're in Seattle uh, out there. What's uh, I'm just going to assume it's raining and gloomy out there right now. Yeah, you you got you got the second half. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Man, uh, no, I'll do respect. We love Seattle around here. Um, but it's great to have you on, and uh, I'm excited to chat about uh, about Watch Crunch. Uh, before we get to that, uh, what are you wearing on your wrist there? Max, I've got a Yun Hans. Okay, nice Meister driver. It's actually, uh, it's it's sort of like a racing inspired watch from, but like not racing, I guess automobile. Uh-huh. Uh, it's made to look like a dash clock from you know early Mercedes cars from the turn of the 19th century. I'm actually putting together a YouTube video on it uh, oh, as nice. we speak. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Young Hans. Yeah, we're all big fans of that uh, of that brand around here. And uh, I know we talked about it before. It's a, it's a brand that's like, uh, um, if you're just casually getting into watches, it's a brand that I think a lot of people are curious about, but they don't really know where to go to see them. Uh, so when we've had them at our show, everyone invariably will stop by the and see the Young Hans and be like really impressed with them uh, in person. Uh, very cool watches uh, in the flesh. Josh, what do you got on over there? Uh, I got my cue on for the first time in a little while, and it's it's good to good to have it back. Nice, yeah. looks great. Uh, looks great on you. I have uh, I have the uh, the new worn and wound uh, collaboration yeah. with Seiko mm. Seiko Five Sport. Um, 10 year anniversary collaboration watch. We just had a big launch event last night uh, in Manhattan. We very well. The watch is all sold out, uh, as far as I know. So it was, it was pretty I, popular. I, I was. Uh, I'm hoping I'm getting number one of 1,000 because I was refreshing my uh, my page. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. we'll, we'll we'll dig around uh, for you. We'll see what we can do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you see my. You'll see my name. <laughs> yeah. No, that was. Uh, I was a really fun time. A lot of people showed up. Uh, Really incredible watches showing up too, and this always happens at our events. I'm I'm really surprised. I guess I'm not surprised anymore. I mean, it's New York, right? Uh, so you get that. I'm sure you get this, Max. It uh, you're a good guy. And you know, I feel like when you get a bunch of enthusiasts in the room, you know, it's I love to see the variety and the diversity of watches on show there. Um, and there's always watches that surprise me. Uh, there's so a lot of people obviously had like their Seikos on, the Seiko divers. Um, uh, but there was also some pretty heavy hitters in the, in the crowd. Uh, uh, there's a, a Lange Odysseus. Uh, there's a Romain Gunthier Continuum, uh, which I was really excited to see. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of a strange watch. I think we've talked about it on, on the podcast. You're familiar with this watch, Max? You know this watch? What I'm no, talking I don't about? think so. It's, no. uh, so Romain Gunthier does like really high-end kind mm. of classic uh, watches. They're, they're Fusi and Chain. Um, uh, which is uh, a constant force, kind of the, the old school constant force. Um, and uh, but he did like a, a slim sport watch uh, just this this past year. And uh, so it's really slim. It's titanium. It's got a rubber integrated bracelet. Integrated um, br- bracelet. Uh, I was really impressed with it. Uh, and then of course, uh, long at one. Uh, there was um, boy some really cool old Seikos, Grand Seikos. Mm. Wow, there's just just a lot of fun to see. And there's no, there's no. People take them off, hand them around, pass them around. Like yeah, right. values don't yeah, matter. No. There's nobody. It's all like they're all it's, equal. I, I'm always, I'm always kind of alarmed by that, you know, because we have, we have these meetups, um, and uh, and it could be like 30, 40 people, and there's just a table full of watches, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and you know, people are eating fries. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Dipping sauces are coming over the watches. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's great. It's like that's the enthusiasm, and and and. You know, people are so excited about them, whatever it is, from a Seiko to a Lange to whatever. And, uh, you know, they're like excited to take it off their wrist if somebody asks and say, oh, you haven't seen this? Like, play with it, like yeah. handle it. No, it's a it's a total, it's a total like nerd dome. Yeah. Uh, but it, I think it's funny when people, when people who are not into watches hear about these events, they assume it's very pretentious. And, yeah. and but then like when I started going to them, I realized, no, this is literally, it's a, it's just like a bubble. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's, it's. 
high or low, you know, we, like we just celebrate the enthusiasm. And I think, you know, yeah. people are there for the right reasons. Like you can tell, you know, um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's, that's, that is, I guess, watch crunch. <laughs> Even though, Max, what, what <laughs> wow. is, what masterful. is, what is watch, watch crunch? <laughs> that was a masterful transition, but <laughs> I have to give it to you. You obviously have been doing this for a while. <laughs> uh, so, okay. So I, I guess I'll start sort of, um, you know, chronologically just to kind of take you back. So, uh, you know, a couple years ago, um, maybe three ish years ago, um, it, you know, when you're sort of, you're on IG and you kind of make connections with other, uh, sort of watch friends, you have like a watch friend group mm -hmm. and then you have like real world friends. And so in, in like a DM group, group that you're sending people, look at this release, yeah, look at this thing. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you end up, well, you know, you end up sort of, uh, you know, taking a, a, a gravitating towards certain personalities and, and then you comment on each other stuff and then you eventually get into these discussions. And, and so somehow it, it was sort of a group of, I think three or four guys. And, um, and, 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 and one day we just kind of got on the topic of, you know, how, uh, we were, I guess, um, looking at the content that was on Instagram mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and how we felt like it was lacking in terms of actual discussions. Mm -hmm. That is more just like people showing something and then there might be some commenting going on, but it's not really a conversation. Yeah. It's more, it, there's usually more emojis than there are letters, <laughs> you know, the um, fire emoji. And, Everywhere. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's great. You know, that's great for like a shorthand um, way of just kind of consuming, uh, you know, photos and images. But we felt like we wanted something more substantive. And obviously, there are forums, there's mm -hmm. many well established forums that exist. Um, but I think the consensus was that our experience on those uh, sites were not that satisfying, mainly from an interface perspective. Um, yeah. A lot of them, you know, like things like Reddit is not really built for watches. And so, you know, they've tried to, I think the watch forums tried to integrate certain features, but it's just not native. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we had, you know, within this group, we had um, a, a web, like a web developer guy. And he's just like, I, we can do so much better than this, you know? Um, yeah. And then and then some other forms just felt kind of old and clunky. And so uh, we're, we're not here to trash anybody. <laughs> um, sure, sure. But we just, we, we felt like we could do better. And then we kind of looked around and we said, oh, like we all have our own set of skills. Like one guy was sort of, you know, in the uh, sort of the tech uh, VC kind of world, or at least had those contacts. And, and so, and then, you know, I had an interest in sort of videography and, and mm -hmm. photography uh sort of all my life and so so we just thought hey like why don't we why don't we try something why don't we do like a proof of concept and then you know the pandemic hit we all had a little bit more time yeah. and so we put our heads together we put our resources together and we made you know the initial version of the site um and and i think we we opened um kind of beta uh, at the end of last year okay. um and and there's been such demand that we just decided, you know what, like it's not it's not done in our head, but it's never going to be done in our head. Yeah. Uh, and so why don't we just see what the reception is um, instead of passing out like private links and such? Yeah. Um, and we opened, and and you know, um, it's been really positive. People write us like these, you know, um, letters uh, uh, thanking us um, for for sort of um, filling uh, this this sort of need. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, it's, it's, it's been very positive so far now. Yeah. yeah. And it's, uh, well, it seems like you got some traction right out of the gates there. So this is what, nine, 10 weeks now that you've, that, that this has been open. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's a whirlwind. Um, and, uh, but it's, it's, it's been, you know, it's less than three months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and I mean, just going on the site, uh, you know, just browsing around, there's those pretty deep discussions um, and comment oh. threads and chains and, or, or I guess, I don't know, whatever. It's like new, that's old school terminology that I'm, that I'm using, like the threads. And, but I think everybody has this experience, especially if they're just getting into the watch world and they kind of are browsing the forums. It's, it's, it can be a rough landscape out there. And if, and if, if you're new to this and you're like younger and you go to a site like time zone or watch pro site, the purest pro, like there's a learning curve to those to yeah. those sites and it's uh, intimidating. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. And and like 
not only from the people that are there perspective, because there's some some whales roaming around there, but they're kind of like mm-hmm. old timers who do not want to change it, and that's just how they like it. Yeah, all of the respect yeah, to them. Uh, for them, it's like for them, it's like whack a mole. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. we love you, yeah. William Messina. Uh, just don't, don't get mad, <laughs> but yeah, like there's kind of like that old guard, and it's it's you know you have to like click to open up a comment and to like see the pic. It's it's a it's a laborious process, and you've got like kind of the stalwarts like watch your seek in the community. There can almost feel a little intimidating because you've got like the people that have been there forever and there's kind of like accepted discourse around certain things so yeah so it can yeah. be a little it can, it can be a lot um so it's it feels like this is kind of a uh you know say like breath of fresh air but it felt like oh there's this this like just people here talking about you know yeah. I've, I've discovered people talking about brands i'd never heard of and uh, yeah and, no and, it's it's what's amazing to see is just the different um levels of discussion you know you've got you know, you've got a thread like, what should I buy for my first luxury watch, right? Yeah. Right next to a thread, you know, about like um, the obscure movements of, from some brand you've never heard of. Yeah. And, and they can coexist. And, and, you know, that we, it was sort of, that that was the proof of concept kind of thing that we were going for is like, can we somehow um, grow this thing, but not let it, um, become a monster. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's, um, you know, we don't want to give away our secret sauce. I mean, we have, we, (laughs) this isn't just like cross our fingers and hope for the best on the, we have a lot of things on the back end in preparation, Mm -hmm. you know, over the course of the last three years, uh, whether that be algorithmic or, you know, um, or, or human driven, uh, to, to, to make sure that people have, uh, regardless of their level, have a positive experience on the site. Yeah, it's very easy to use. It's very uh, intuitive. Uh, I felt like, do you, do you, uh, like, I don't want to compare, I, I don't use Facebook, um, but is there, is there an element of like, we want it to feel like that kind of a, like there's a, there's a feed that's kind of like coming yeah. at you that you can kind of go into and discuss and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. So, so we really looked at where existing discussions are happening mm-hmm. um, and what are the positive elements that we should um you know that we should use and and specifically addressing people's gripes about uh, different platforms i mean every platform has its own positives and negatives right and the question is can we create one where we just kind of combine the positives and that's that's what we're trying to do and we can absolutely use the terminology of forums uh, because i i mean i see this as like a forum with extra features right it's a it's a forum that was designed from the ground up uh, as a platform for watches, meaning, um, you know, when every everything, every way that you interface with it, it's not like, oh, we're we're trying to make this public forum and 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 somehow tailor it towards watches. It's like this is for watches. Like when you open a post, you can upload a picture, you can create a review, you know, you can upload a video, um, and it's it's but it's sort of um, driven by newer tech, and so rather than the classic kind of table of content style, mm-hmm. it's more like it learns as you engage with different content, or um, by which uh, you know hashtags that you follow, uh, it learns what to put on your personalized feed. So your feed, Blake, will look different than my feed, okay. but I can go explore. You know, I can explore new topics. Like there's a discover page where you can explore new topics if you feel like you want to. But if you just you're in line for a coffee and you just need to log on real quick, uh, you'll get the stuff that's tailored to you. Okay, nice. Uh, so you mentioned that getting a coffee, like, uh, and 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 that brings up the kind of on the go element. And I'm sure you knew I was going to ask this: Is there an app version, or will there be an app version of yeah, this? It feels yeah, so, like tailor so I- made for that. Yeah, so so this was, you know, early on, there was a lot of discussion, as you can imagine, about app, no app. Uh, and here's sort of the way that we think about it. Um, I'm a proponent of app because I feel like, yeah, if I'm in line for a coffee, I'm it's going to uh, that extra click of going to a site is it may just be enough of a barrier. Mm-hmm. Um, the, and so what but we had to start somewhere. And uh, because we we sort of did a soft launch just in terms of like a proof of concept, we didn't, you, you need quite a bit of resources to develop simultaneously two apps, one for iOS, one for Android. And so we thought, let's focus on a site, and but let's optimize it so it feels like an app mm-hmm. when you go yeah. into it. And you, you probably notice when you're, once you're in the site and it's loaded on your browser, it feels like native, it feels like a native experience. Yeah, yeah um, it really and, does, yeah. 
Yeah. And so, so what you see behind my background here, that is, this is the desktop look, right? If yeah. you, if you load it on your phone, really, you, you mainly get that middle section, which is your feed. Um, all the rests, the sidebars are accessible through uh, other buttons and such. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and the thought was, let's, let's optimize a website for mobile because asking somebody to download a new app that has no, you know, uh, has, has no, no sort of traffic on it is, would be a hard press uh, thing to do. So let's try to start with, uh, a, you know, a website. And then once we get some organic um, participation, then people will be incentivized to download an app once we develop it. But that's absolutely, we have people working on apps, uh, you know, very hard right now. Oh, cool. Cool. Uh, so if, uh, if, if someone's listening to this and thinks it sounds interesting, they go to watchcrunch.com. What can they expect to find? Like, what are you hoping they do? They have to make an account to get access to see anything, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So, so one thing that we, you know, um, because we want the people that are there, um, you know, one of the, one of the issues, and you're going to have this anywhere, is just what is it like? Ninety-five percent of people don't post anything, and they just read, and that's okay. Like you can do that on uh, Watch Crunch, but we really, um, in that uh, that initial sign-up process, we really want to learn a few things about you. Like what brands do you like? You know what? Um, mm -hmm. You know what? What topics are you interested in? So that we can start to sort of tailor the experience to you. So yeah, you'll you, when you go to watchcrunch.com, you'll you'll see a, a welcome page, and it'll ask you to you know choose a username, etc., and then click uh, check some boxes of things that you're interested in, and then you can go in and play around. I, I you know it's free, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. So. So take five minutes, play around, and if you see something interesting, uh, you can engage or just read. Um, cool. Well, and I, and I want to get back to watches, but you just said something there. Uh, it's free. Uh, the monetization angle, I'm sure, this is something that you get asked uh, a lot. Also, I don't see a bunch of ads or or anything like that. Uh, what's what's the we point hate there? ads? Okay. <laughs> so does that mean yeah. we are the product, uh, the users there, uh, or what's the so, approach? So you know the. We are lucky that the founding uh, group um, has enough resources and runway to really take this thing pretty far before we have to. Um, you know, we think of we think of uh, we are always balancing. Um, where the experience is going to be first, um, and and the question is always, you know, if you are to monetize, can you do it in a way where you don't dilute the experience, mm -hmm. right? I know if I'm on a forum and it's big banner pops up and it's for, you know, pills that enhance certain, you know, functions, like <laughs> sure. that's yeah. going to, that's going to, um, that's going to sort of turn me off. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but you, you're right. I mean, everything has to uh, run and, and the world runs on money and, and uh, we, we're lucky in that that's a distant kind of concern for us right now. Uh, we're, we really don't want to take our focus uh, away from, I mean, what you're seeing is really like version 1.3, right? Mm -hmm. um, we have we, we we have multiple ideas that's currently being executed on, and we really want to focus on those things to bring users a better experience. Uh, just give you an example, um, something to look forward to. I think the next feature that's going to drop is um, where on your profile um, it, you can uh, upload like your collection. Um, okay. And you know, I'm not on the tech side, so I don't know exactly how that's going to be executed. But you can basically uh, personalize your own profile, and when people come check you out, like you start a post, like they like you, they follow you, and they can click on your profile and they can see sort of what your current uh, collection is. Um, and I think that that will be that will be really nice. Mm. Um, it's just you know, th this is what I'm talking about when I say watch specific features, right? It, it's you can't really get that on uh, you know a lot of other platforms. Yeah. So what if uh, what if say like we at Warned Wound wanted to license a part of what you're doing there and make our comment section like run on whatever's powering Watch Crunch <laughs> and people could like have mm -hmm. their own profile brought as commenters mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. And then you know that would just be a part of the discussion forum, and maybe it would live simultaneously in uh, in Watch Crunch or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I think there's some there's something cool there in, in the commenting system right now. It's a little like especially on sites like ours. It's either like you build something totally bespoke, or you use something like Discuss mm -hmm. or whatever that mm -hmm. you know. This may be a little rougher around the edges as it is an experience for a lot of people. <laughs> so 
Uh, but I don't know. I mean, I like the idea of kind of having like one big community of commenters that's like, you know, well, I, like, yeah. I read this side, I, mean, I read that I, side. I, like, I'm, you know. I'm amazed. You know, within within a few weeks of launching, we had a, a thread go for over 100 responses. Oh, yeah. Like overnight, really, you know, it just caught fire. Um, and, and so and and some of I mean, some of these uh, comments are like soliloquies, you know, multiple paragraphs of, from really knowledgeable people. And mm -hmm. so. For me, it's been great because it helps me to research my ideas for the YouTube channel, right? Yeah. Because I'm putting out basically a video a week, and uh, and and so I'll almost beta test my ideas um, on uh, on the site. Uh, you know, uh, hmm. you know, for this watch, I posted it and I asked people what they thought, like what they thought it meant to to like German Bauhaus, you know, uh, styling, what what that meant to them, and if it sort of deserves its own spot in your watch box. And, and there was some really, really interesting, I, we had two German guys comment. And, oh, and, nice. uh, yeah. uh, and so, um, so it's, yeah, it's, we're, we're really taken aback just by how quickly uh, this has been um, embraced. And I think it speaks to the, the initial vision, which was very organic, which was, Hey, like we want something that we would use. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's build it. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And you've got some, uh, you've got some notable personalities on the site. I've noticed. Uh, so, yeah. uh, like you know, from like the uh, Jenny L, I think was the name that that, that stood out to she me. She made a post. Uh, mm -hmm. And our, our our buddy Scaramanga, uh, of course. Uh, yeah. So, mm -hmm. th th there's a few names that stuck out to me, uh, and then I see, uh, is 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 there any moderation going on here, or can people like with their own kind of outfits come and just use it to like? you know, this is just the channel that I'm using to like post all of my content that I create into kind of a new area to yeah. go. And use. So this is a, this is part of the growth process of, yeah. of seeing what works, what doesn't we, you know, like I said, there's some combination of uh, like algorithmic tools as far as, as much as sort of human factors that are at play. Um, we, we do feel like if, if you make a post that's, you know, that people don't like, it's just going to naturally not bubble to the top. Sure. Um, and so in that way, it works more organically, like a lot of newer uh, apps where it's not just chronological. It's really just we give you the good stuff and we give you the stuff that you we think you want to see. Um, it, 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 we we've definitely had a lot of uh, people who are not individuals um, who come in, who bring their own audience, who mm -hmm. ask questions like that. And, and so far, uh, we've mostly allowed people to just post whatever and, and see how the algorithm treats it. Um, but I think um, I, as far as moderation is concerned, that's another feature that's probably going to come right after the, the state of the collection feature, um, oh, okay. which is which is uh, a dashboard for uh, moderators. We've you know, I think it really speaks to the strength of the product when you have multiple users messaging you saying, can I take a more active role here to mm -hmm. help build this community. Yeah. Um, people saying like, we're, I'm afraid, like the tone is really good right now and I'm afraid this is gonna go downhill like a lot of other places I've seen. Yeah. How can I uh, help? Um, and so I screenshotted all those messages mm -hmm. and, 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 and the response is, uh, we'll, we'll need you soon. Uh, once we finish building the technical side of the moderation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Uh, yeah. but if, if, if like worn and wound as an entity wanted to make an account and just spam it with our own content, it would just, the quality of the content would kind of, uh, like, like if yeah, we did it on Reddit, for there's, instance, it there's just... a lot of people with YouTube channels posting their videos. Yeah. That's fine. You yeah. know, if you get engagement, then we're happy. We, you know, we're we're thinking of this a lot like um, newer sort of social media platforms, which is the cream rises to the top. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you make good stuff and people engage, great. As long as it's not negative, as long as it's not harassment, um, yeah. that's that's the ultimate barometer. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. Very cool. Uh, and then the state of the collection thing sounds interesting as well. Um, and then there could be certainly. Um, uh some some elements that you could pull in from I, I see like kind of insurance type entities popping up specifically for watches and it seems like there's a lot of things existing now just for the watch and <laughs> enthusiasts out there and of course yeah. that's really yeah. valuable I, data it, to have it, it's i don't know something about the last couple of years and people being cooped up and you know um it just uh you can see it from the market side of watches right and yeah um I just think, uh, yeah, there's so much enthusiasm right now, so many new people coming in. Uh, mm -hmm. And so it's a good time to have a new platform where people don't feel intimidated, where they yeah. can come and learn. Um, 
And, and, you know, there is, you know, we like to say there are no stupid questions on, on watch crunch. Yeah, no, that's great. And I, and I think it's, um, I, we've said it a hundred times about people going into like a Rolex boutique and having a terrible experience uh, or not being able to get whatever like hype watch they want. So they kind of like look a little bit deeper and then they discover this whole mm. other world that's there, uh, and like all these other rabbit holes to fall down yeah. and that's great. And I mean, this is, this is like the, the tools that you're giving them to do that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, given the unobtainability of, of Rolex, it's almost a blessing uh, in that pe- it, it forced people to to discover, you know, other other brands. And uh, yeah. yeah, there's there's the rabbit hole goes very deep as, as, as you. So you uh, are a watch enthusiast yourself. Uh, you mentioned that you make uh, uh, YouTube videos. Uh, is there a connection there to Watch Crunch? Is that that's just something yeah. that you do? Yeah. In, in so your... the, the yeah the, so the YouTube channel is is Watch Crunch. It is well. Watch Crunch. Okay. Uh, and uh, and yeah, um, we so I started a couple years ago, um, and uh, and it's it's we've been growing pretty fast, and mm-hmm. uh, you know videos over a hundred thousand views, and oh, nice. um, and uh, and it's yeah it's I I so I think there's there's sort of two polar ends of, of watch enthusiasts. There are the people who, um, you know, like are constantly looking at seven watches at a time and, and, you know, want, um, and, and there are watching videos, um, you know, like there's a lot of like Teddy Baldwin's our videos where it's like the 25 watches that you should think about at this price point. Right. Like <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. not me. Yeah. Right. Like I I'm, you know, like I, I'm very much like one, one watch at a time or one idea at a time kind of guy. Right um, so, so for me, it's almost like making a love letter to a watch. Okay. Right. Okay. Like, okay. like when I find, like when I found this watch uh, was because I had, I had a max bill from you Hans and I, um, over Christmas, I'd given it to, to a, a friend of mine who's an architect. Um, and, uh, and you know, I was like, man, like, I can't think of a better watch as a gift for you. Um, but then I, I've just like really, really, uh, started to miss, uh, like the Bauhaus design. And so, so I actually found this watch because somebody posted a picture of it on watch crunch. Oh, um, okay, okay. and then I nice. said, wow, that's a, that's a really, that's a really striking, uh, watch. And, um, and then, so for me, like when I find that gem, like I want to tell the world about it. And that's sort of where I'm coming from with okay. my videos. So it's a personal angle there. Like this is your personal watch. It's not like you've been lent yeah. it by the brand for review and you're kind of giving it a quick right. run around the exactly. block or something. Okay. Now, of course, like there's a multitude of content, right? When when you're reviewing 50 some odd watches a, a year, um, you can't you can't buy all of them yeah um but uh but, but, <laughs> but the, yeah the individual watches are often my own um uh, and then sometimes but like sometimes i'll put three watches together and 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 but but more talk about an idea yeah uh like i'm trying to get three different uh, tutors together um and uh and and i think i'm gonna call the video like why the perfect watch doesn't exist. Uh, okay, <laughs> it's that's like a... it's like my personal struggle in finding the right kind of tutor diver. You know what? What are the three tutors going to be? Uh, that one's going to be so my personal one is the nine two five, the the sterling silver. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then uh, my buddy has a Black Bay fifty eight that he's going to lend me, and I'm trying to source a, a Pelagos. Uh, okay, very cool. Uh, well, I might be able to help you out there. Uh, if, if you're really, <laughs> yeah, really desperate. Off <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a, I'm a big proponent. I, I, I like all those watches quite a bit. Um, and, uh, uh, and I, I've got, uh, I have the FXD. Um, now, oh, which, yeah, I, do, I, I review that watch, which I like quite yeah. a bit. What was your take on that watch? Did you, did you, were you like, I love it. Yeah. Right. It's cool. And, and I it's, love it's, it. it's kind of big, but in a way it like wears way better than it has any business wearing. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, on paper, I shouldn't be able to wear that watch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and I guess at certain angles on the wrist, uh, that that's true. But um, <laughs> yeah. but 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 I, I if I sort of adjust it perfectly, like it it works. Yeah. Um, and I think it comes down to the case design, comes down to the thinness, yeah. um, of of the whole package. Um, but but I yeah that that watch is very polarizing because I I just feel like. If you don't get it, or or if you if you're not like nerding out on the whole snowflake history, it doesn't make sense, right? It's yeah. it seems it seems in many ways inferior than the Pelagos. Um, mm-hmm. But I think so. I I've had I've owned a vintage a snowflake. Oh, okay, uh, nice. And and so so when they finally 
made really the modern rendition of it i was i was calling everybody yeah. <laughs> yeah no they've they've um they've had some real hits uh there with those but yeah there, there's it's it's something very unusual about it and you either kind of like not that you like you certainly you can get it and just not care for it <laughs> but i think there are certain people that just kind of gravitate towards like kind of weird funky things like that that are made for weird purposes um, that exist yeah. and you know yeah. i think the only thing strange about this one is that like they're odd, like they're they're selling it commercially to civilians <laughs> instead of mm -hmm. you know like the old mm -hmm. ones it was just kind of well you need it yeah. for this like hyper niche purpose then like we'll make it for you mm -hmm. and just like it's an issued thing you know like right. well like well i guess we'll put them in our stores too if people <laughs> if and people also also the price point you know yeah. like like it's a special watch that is at a very ordinary price yeah and and i think the title of my video was uh, why you should consider buying this over the black bay 58 Yes. Yeah. It's it's, a, it's yeah. almost the same price. Yeah. And if you got the wrist for it, it's it's a to me it's a much more special piece with a with a, with a much deeper history. Do you think that the kind of like uh, throwback vintage styling kind of brought back? Do you think that's kind of like starting to like okay, that's maybe like run its course a little bit, and people are <laughs> or are they're like yearning for like original modern designs that are great? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like I get I get that sense a little bit, and I hope brands are kind of starting to pay attention to that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I love the, some of the old stuff as much as anybody, and I think there's some beautiful stuff out there. But it's been what maybe about five six years now that that's been like really kind of like in the zeitgeist of like oh like how close to the original I, is I, it? I, is it the same dimensions? Is this you, and that? You, I feel like you see this in the design world in general, right? You see this in furniture, you see this in cars, you see yeah. this in buildings. Um, I don't think I don't think society's ever going to not do that. Um, and I, I, I just feel like maybe the watch world is a little late to the game, if anything. <laughs> sure. And we're just kind of like learning. Um, I love it. I yeah. think I think I, you know, I always say like the best design to me has limitations. And 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 is bounded by um, you know by restrictions, and and then and then you see how the artist plays within those boundaries. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. and, and to me, like that is that that sort of that duality, that struggle is really what makes for good design. You know, um, it, it, with the ultra modern stuff where you don't really even like you know shapes and colors that don't even. Um, uh, fall under any sort of understanding, uh, preconceived understanding in your brain. I struggle with that, and mm -hmm. so, so to me, um, there's definitely. I absolutely agree. There's good. There's good ways of doing, um, you know, vintage-looking watches, and then there's bad ways of doing it. Yeah. Um, I think the, the, you know, the, going back to the Black Bay, um, you know, I think the, the the reason why the Black Bay 58 was such a big hit was like. Um, how they executed on that really well. Yeah, you know, they, they they gave you that sort of vintage sub feel um, in a modern package. Yeah, and if you were new into the hobby and you didn't, you had no perception of what what was past, and you saw that watch, I don't think you would say, "Oh, this looks like an old vintage design." Like it, it still right. looks like a normal, like modern. At least to me, I don't know. Maybe we've been around these things too much, but it's no, it, to, does. it does. It turns it does. out, but like it's, it's like this crystal. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. it like it transcends mm -hmm. the kind of like just specific era that it was made for, uh, yeah. and I think like a brand like Zenith is, does a, it does a pretty good job of like kind of bringing like paying respect to what made those original watches really great, but in like new modern ways, which make yeah, them I, kind I, of timeless. I res yeah, I respect uh, companies that like they have a design ethos or or like a design kind of um, uh, you know um, motif that then they that's like that's what bounds them right and then within that boundary they then play with other elements yeah. to give you variations but but when you see it you know uh, you know when you see those uh, tri-colored sub dials like you know that's a zenith yeah. but it could be in 10 different styles of cases and whatnot um and i, I like that yeah I, I do i do like it when when people when brands know what they're all about yeah. so tell me about your journey into watches you've been into watches for a long time you've been making videos uh yeah like uh probably a decade or so okay. um yeah i you know um if you want to go back really further you know i at some point i was like oh i should wear something on my wrist and uh <laughs> and then um and then I like think, i guess a watch will do <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It was 
it was more like it wasn't cool enough to just like do one of those like biker like like leather bands or whatever and yeah. you know with the spikes and yeah, uh yeah. um and so so my first watch was actually i think a diesel uh you know it was one of those like you know little little square quartz things built into a big black leather band <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was like man this is the coolest <laughs> thing ever um and then but really when i got into mechanical watches was um uh, there was somebody at the office that I was working in, uh, who, you know, at that time I was, I think I was wearing, um, you know, like a fashion watch of some sort. Mm -hmm. And he was like, Hey, like what, what, what watch you got on there? And I showed it to him and you just saw his face drop uh, <laughs> yeah, when he yeah. realized it was, it was like not a real watch. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, sure. And he just, he just sort of slowly turned around back to his computer. Yeah. Uh, but you know, for me, uh, I was curious. I was like, well, teach me, like, tell yeah. me what, what this whole world is. And he, and we, we got to talking and that led me to buying, um, uh, like a Seiko star 033, nice. um, yeah. probably a starter watch for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I had this experience. I wore that because at that time I didn't make a lot of money and it was kind of a splurge for me. And, um, and I didn't, um, expect this to happen, uh, which was, I wore it for over a year. And then there was this moment where I looked down at it and I said, I think I like this watch more today than I did when I first bought it. And Interesting. Like it kind of grew on you subtly in a way, but, but you weren't like on forums and, and all that kind of stuff. You just no, like had the watch no, and you no. wore it. And it was, it was basically watch. one guy roasted me uh -huh. and then, and then, uh, <laughs> you upped your game. <laughs> <laughs> and, and have my game yeah i was like you know let me take this criticism and, and yeah. go to work <laughs> yeah, no that's awesome and, and then one and day then, you just started making videos You're like, well no so i mean this was like a decade ago right yeah, sure. um yeah and uh and so i just thought wow like in this world of like uh what like design obsolescence right mm -hmm. um you you very rarely have that experience where an object um kind of kind of uh you know grows on you and so i was like well there, there's there might be something here right mm -hmm. so then that led to like hamilton's and nomos's and then eventually tutors and mm -hmm. et cetera et cetera yeah. um but but the video stuff was was kind of later when i was like well let me take the two things i'm interested in and see if i can compress it into one yeah okay so by by trade you are into the video video editing producing uh, no by trade i'm in medicine so oh geez uh, wow th this is completely started out as a complete hobby for me and now okay. it's just it's snowballing i don't know to where okay <laughs> uh no that's good so do you have uh uh do you is it do you still do that by like i guess by day as that's your yeah yeah i, I do um I've, I've been able to kind of cut back and i'm probably going to continue to uh, on some level Mm -hmm. um but uh but but i think it, this is really the a perfect counterbalance the way i see it is like i i have enough uh i think capacity that that one thing is never going to take up all of my focus mm -hmm. and and so um i i felt like when i think about watches i don't think about medicine and vice versa and it's yeah. it's really um sublimating my hobby into something productive <laughs> yeah have you gotten into any of your colleagues into uh into this world Oh yeah. I love buying watches for people. Oh, I nice. love just, I, I feel like watches are the best gifts yeah. because when you give somebody a watch and they like it, it means that you know that person, uh, right? Yeah, Out yeah. of like the hundreds of thousands of choices, you gave them something yeah. that is almost bespoke to them. And I just think that is so meaningful. Um, like giving an architect a max bill, like yeah. what else? Yeah. You know? Yeah. It just um, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have an actor friend who's um, who who is uh, you know Japanese American, um, and I gave him. Uh, he's half Japanese, half half Chinese American, uh -huh. um, and he's really into like uh, Asian American culture. And I gave him uh, one of those Siegel chronographs. You know. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. 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 And uh, and so you know, I gave I gave my mom a Nomos. I gave my dad uh, my old Sarb. And so oh, cool, um, cool. yeah. So it's still in the family. Absolutely, it's still in the family. Right, yeah. There's right. always. There's always going to be a SARB or a three, you know, in yeah. the family. Love to love to see that. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> awesome. Uh, so, how has your own collecting kind of evolved in recent years? Uh, quite, sort of uh, schizophrenically. I feel. Okay. Uh, yeah. There is, if I think, if you were to map it in, in terms of quantity, it really undulates uh, uh, wildly. Mm -hmm. um there are times where i have more than 40 watches and there are times where i'm down to less than a dozen um okay it, it, i mean partly if you're 
again, if you're going through 50, 100 watches a year, just making video, like you're constantly buying and selling watches, right? Yeah. Um, so I consider like my core collection and then the stuff that's just on the conveyor belt. Coming and going, okay. Uh, yeah. What, what's um, a part of your like core, like if, if I looked at some of those watches, what I'd get, I'd be like, oh, okay, I get I get what this guy likes and, and it's about, or is it kind of like <laughs> yeah. all over the map? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I feel like I'm, uh, right now at least, I can't speak for, you know, uh, five years from now, but right now, I'm more focused on sort of the three to six thousand dollar kind of mid tier luxury uh, watches and just the compilation of things. Right, um, yeah. I've got a I've got a, a five digit Datejust uh, with the Buckley dial. Okay, nice. I have a special edition Speedmaster, a 1957 reissue with the broad arrow yeah. hand. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, put the new, the, the new sort of uh, jub, uh, sort of president style bracelet on there. Yeah, um, love that bracelet. bracelet. Oh man, so good. Yeah. Um, and then I have a IWC a Spitfire. Um, nice. I don't have a big wrist, so it's hard for me to find an IWC I can I can wear. Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, and that one works for me. Um, and then I've got the Tudor, the nine two five. Yeah, um, nice. And then. I've I've also like built or uh, I guess modded some Seikos. Oh, cool. Uh, okay, you get into that yeah. scene a little bit. All right. Yeah, yeah. Because um, like I feel like at some there was a stage where I was like, oh, like I'm starting to see these motifs and styles. Um, but what if I was like, I really want a, a a explorer dial, but with the Omega Broad Arrow hands on it. I just think that would <laughs> okay. look good. Yeah. And yeah. so I I I actually. Um, Took apart one of the Sarbs and uh, and basically built a Explore Broad Arrow out of it. Cool. cool. Uh, I still wear that watch. I love it. <laughs> oh, you still okay? Very nice. Yeah, yeah I feel like that's a, that can be a little infectious. Like once you start doing it, then it's uh, yeah. Like I've seen guys that do that and they they go deep. They go deep. No, uh, on them, but more power to them. Whole, that's awesome. That's a whole other segment. Yeah, that, uh, that you know, like I I have a friend who. Uh, he he bought a kit, um, basically a, like a Panerai kit, um, but but not just fitting parts together. He was soldering on his own lugs and sewing the leather oh. strap oh, because cool. it's the wire lugs, so yeah. he can't take the strap on and off. So he had to put it put the leather on and sew it himself. Oh wow, so Jeez, that's, that's another level. That's commitment. <laughs> that's that's cool. Um, so it sounds like you've got a pr- pretty like set stable of classics uh, there. Do you dabble in? I know kind of recently over the last couple of years, the kind of micro brands independent scene is like really come into its own yeah, and mature yeah. in a big way. Do you pay attention to that world at all? Absolutely. I love, I love, uh, I have a love hate relationship with micro brands. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. I think the love is, is just how the daringness of design. Mm-hmm. You can tell like it wasn't like a committee of people who chose something safe. Yeah. It was one guy who was like, executing on his like a vision that he had in a dream or something you know yeah uh, and i love that I, I love that um and but i get i think the, the the problem is when when you are used to like better fit and finish sometimes you get the watch and you're like mm, yeah like, it just it doesn't like these these this gap is a little too big or like it sounds a, a little you know um snobby but like but you 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 get a sense for what good finishing is and good fit is yeah. um and, and uh and the bracelets right i mean bracelets always tough to do bracelets oftentimes are as uh, you know um a, a, a afterthought and so you know a good example um is that new baltic mr01 mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i did a video on that uh, a couple weeks ago yeah um and it's i mean it's such a beautiful design yeah um it's it, it again it's taking this kind of calatrava boundaries but then playing with it you know and uh and 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 it's it's so such a striking watch that immediately gives you that vintage kind of um recall but but the the movement it's um uh, it's not inspiring it's it, when you when you wind it it doesn't feel good um yeah. when you try to set the time it kind of catches and makes you feel like it's like not um really there and so so that's my frustration is is how I haven't found a micro brand watch that um, that I'm ex- excited like three months in. Uh, sure, sure. Yeah, I get that a lot, and and we we deal with a lot of of these watches uh, uh, in in our profession, and and it's 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 
yeah, you notice a lot of these things. And I think some of them, it's like, you know, you can let it get to you. And some, of you know, for some people, like, it's going to be a total deal breaker. And some people are like, you know, I, I want to support what they're doing. And I think they're going in the right direction. I can live with, you know, maybe the crown's a little wonky or it doesn't set quite yeah. you know, how you want. Yeah. yeah and it kind of like it is what it is. And like, those are hard things for, for small brands to like really nail yeah. down, you know. Um, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, when you talk about like, supporting you know supporting the 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 brands and supporting these visionaries absolutely yeah it's a um i mean a micro brand if it was to survive long enough will become a macro brand right um and uh and and i think i mean i think you know there's a few prominent ones out there like baltic um like like laurier i really like yeah um right that uh i think you know i'm trying to get my hands on on a fairer Far. Yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I really like their colors and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I feel like a lot of them have have a lot of potential. Uh, but sure, yeah, you, you you don't have the money to develop your own movement, you know, from the get go. Yeah, yeah. No, if, um, that's interesting. You say I'll put you in touch with Paul of Sweetenham of Fair. Uh, they do awesome watches, and I think they're they're some brands just like they have a knack for getting those like small little details uh, right. Yeah. Uh, Monta is yeah. another every one. Every time like, I see a every time I see a Fair ad, I'm just like like where's my credit card you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah they've got to look and like they're they're their own thing they're recognizable from like across the room uh they're original mm. i don't know there's something mm. about them and, just, and british you know and british yeah quintessentially yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely uh well that's awesome um so where where uh where what is watch crunch going to look like in two years five years what's where's it going from here <laughs> Other than the app, I feel like course. I feel like it's going to look very different in in three months. Um, I mean, the the general theme is going to be the same, um, and uh, but it's going to be a lot more feature full. You know, uh, if if we were really going by our sort of OCD standards, we it, it wouldn't even be uh, live right now. Um, we 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 would probably want to add five more. Uh, you know, watch specific features before we launched. But, but again, it was just people were banging down the door, and and we just had to open and, and deal with um, you know doing this on the on the go. Um, so, so I think you know I think Watch Crunch hopefully um, will still have the same tone. It's it's very supportive, and people are are, um, are really helpful. You know, when somebody asks a, a you know a, a, a simple question, people are very helpful. Um, and uh, and what the really the next big thing that we're focusing on is is giving so so like say you've been on the site for a while and you're engaging in the discussions but you, you want to explore a little bit more mm-hmm. right you know you want to make it more personal i think that's a big part of it it's like developing each person's profile mm-hmm. having that page be be so that you can personalize it and it's yeah. almost like your you know i can imagine like a year from now when somebody's like who are you in the watch world and you just you give them a link to your watch crunch profile oh uh, nice okay yeah yeah, yeah that's like, fun it's my... it's it's like you're, you you could let a part of your personality i think now like you get a profile picture and yeah you and you can have like yeah. a header picture in there and it's uh right. it's fun it's fun to do you know yeah yeah the, the the profile kind of uh tab within within watch crunch will be like your watch linkedin you know yeah I like it. I like it. Uh, very cool. No, it's it's been great, uh, and I've I've been poking around there from time to time, and it it looks like there's great discussions going on already. And and like I said, I've, I mean, I've learned about new brands, and and uh, and and I love seeing that kind of stuff. I love seeing other people's enthusiasm. It makes me more enthusiastic about it as well. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so keep doing what you're doing, and uh, congratulations on the launch. Uh, where can people go to see more of you on YouTube, and where should people go to sign up for an account? Yeah. So um, no, thanks for having me. It's it's been such a such a great chat. Um, yeah. Wish I could have been there for the cold beer. Yeah, next uh, time. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, we I, we come to New York often. So oh, right uh, and we uh, some of our founders actually live in New York. Um, oh, cool. So yeah, no, thanks for having us. Um, so watchcrunch.com it is uh, is the site. Um, it'll ask you to open a profile uh, pretty quick, and then just you know go play around. Um, there's a very active community um, uh, already there, so it's not going to be like you know, uh, you, like you can hear a pin drop or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, and and I think we're we're also going to be focusing on more educational um, things like 
uh, you know, like articles and, and videos and things like that. Cool. So that's watchcrunch.com. Um, we, we, we call it like, uh, you know, a watch form with personality. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like it. Yeah. Um, the YouTube channel is is on YouTube. If you just search Watch Crunch or Watch Crunch with Max, uh, there's some variations in the name, um, but uh, but you, you'll find us. Um, you know, same color scheme, white and green. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, I I do a video a week, uh, usually on my current obsession. Cool. Um, and uh, and so if you check it out uh, this week, it'll be on this nice uh, Yoon Hans right. um, driver's watch. Yeah. Um, yeah, I hope hope to hope to meet everybody and um, yeah, it's, it's been a nice chat, Blake. All right, cool. Uh, well, you heard it right there. That's where you can find them if you are sick of uh, the same old forum scene and that discussions there, all the fights, the maybe toxicity at times. Go check out Watch Crunch. Uh, it's a pretty cool platform. We'll be keeping an eye on it. Uh, Max, next time you're in town, beers on me. And uh, thanks so much for making time for us today. Yeah, thanks, Blake. And um, I'm looking forward to the worn and wound 10th edition Seiko 5 coming in the mail. Definitely. I think you'll love it. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening. And uh, until next time, take care.